Hey guys, welcome to VR Essentials. Welcome back, of course, as today we're going to be talking about a very cool topic, whether you should upgrade from the HP Reverb G2 to the DPVR E4. As you guys know, I've been putting the DPVR E4 through its paces for more than 200 hours now. Full disclosure, they did contact me for potentially working with them. We have been talking together, although nothing has happened just yet, but I'm going to give you a full spectrum about everything it's going to be unbiased believe me and i'm going to let you know whether i would actually sell my g2 in order to keep the dpvr e4 or whether if i didn't have a g2 whether i would or if i didn't have the dpvr e4 whether i would actually upgrade to the dpvr e4 and then sell my g2 so are you ready guys let's go into the specs first talking about putting this thing side by side we'll talk about the technical specs and then after that i will talk to you about my actual personal point of view in terms of all these kind of different things so the first thing is they're both of course pc powered vr headsets which means that you will need basically a pc in order to to use them and i would highly recommend that you use a 3000 series card however i've been using uh, rtx 2070 and i think it's the perfect card to actually give you my honest opinion because it really it really will tell you whether which headset can actually eat the frame rates the most and which headset really really transforms the graphics from the graphics card into the, vet, the VR headset in terms of showing you where are the actual points in the graphics which lack the most. So I think having RTX 2070 is going to give you a much better review in terms of which VR headset is the best when you put them side by side. Let's go back inside of the actual uh, specs here. So um, the DPVR E4 came out in February 2023, whilst the G2 is quite old now, it's uh, November 2020, so you would think that automatically you should definitely update to the uh, DPVR E4, right? Well, stay tuned until the end of this video, guys, as you might be surprised. Who knows? I'll let you know later. The price is 549 at the moment for the DPVR E4, 599 for the G2, although I think you can get it for cheaper now. Uh, now, they both have Fresno lenses. Now, basically, there is a difference there. I have to say I have to give it to DPVR E4, where the actual lenses itself, let me just get, grab the actual headset for you. I will just show you. Uh, but basically, the clarity around the actual lens, which are here, the lenses are here. Um, maybe I'll put some superimposing video later for you, but the clarity around the actual lenses themselves are more clear around the lenses on the edges so when you move your eyeballs from left to right or up and down you won't really see or notice any blurriness around the actual lenses themselves which i think is great and also it makes it much easier when you put the headset on to adjust it so that you don't have to find the exact sweet spot in the center where everything is basically clear for you right however with the g2 that's where there has been a little bit of complaints in terms of the sweet spot itself like you really have to adjust the headset perfectly to make sure it's clear you find the clarity in the center of the headset and nothing's blurry of course if you move your eyeballs from left to right or up and down it will be more blurry around the edges which can disturb some people however for people like me i generally speaking i will move my head up and down not just my eyeballs so it really really doesn't disturb me to be honest with you but it is a plus side for those who have the uh, dpvr e4 for sure in terms of this specific thing uh, the ipd is 54 74 for the uh, DPVR versus 60 to 68 mm for the uh, G2. Now, generally speaking, it's absolutely fine. It's good enough. But of course, the more IPD range, the better, right? So again, we could give this to DPVR. So 2-0 at the moment. But do, uh, do, do watch until the end of this video as, you know, there might be some surprises there uh, as we go through. And of course, at the end of the video, I'll let you know which one I would go for. Now, the uh, DPVR 4 has a single LCD binocular versus two LCD binocular for the G2. And I have to say that I have to give this one to the G2 because the contrast inside, basically the, LC, the double LCD makes it so that you have much more contrast in the gameplay inside of the G2. So when you're playing stuff like Half-Life Alyx or, you know, horror things or threading things or all these kind of things, or you're inside of a shadow area, you know, not so bright, it really, really feels like you're there. Like there's no grayness kind of layer on top of the blacks. The blacks are super black and the brights are super bright. So the contrast is really, really gives it much more of a realistic kind of feel in terms of the actual uh, gameplay itself. So I have to give this one to the G2. 
Uh, the DPVR has 1832 by 1920 per eye. However, per eye for the G2 is 2160 by 2160. And again, I have to say that the clarity inside of the G2 is absolutely mind-boggling. Um, you know, the pixels really don't bleed at all. They're very sharp, much further away. Um, you know, in terms of the gameplay, when I'm playing VR sims especially, just there isn't so many flickering or jagged edges here and there, you know, like on the car or the trees or the environment or the grills, you know, all these kind of different things. Or so even when I'm playing Haunted Citadel, which is an RPG game, uh, you know, I don't get so many flicker and so many... It just, it just feels like the G2 handles things much better in terms of graphics, but we will talk a little bit more about this later in the video. So do hang around for that. Uh, all right, let's continue. So the uh, DPVR E4 goes up to 120 hertz versus the G2, which goes to 90 hertz. Now, I have to be honest with you that even though you can go to 120 hertz with the uh, DPVR E4, it doesn't really... It doesn't really it doesn't seem like there's any much difference, to be honest with you. Uh, first of all, most of the game developers would have to render their games to be at 120 hertz. If not, it won't make a freaking difference, to be honest with you, first of all. But secondly, there's a lot more uh, issues with the DPVR 4 when you're running the headset at 120 hertz. I feel that it's, it, it, uh, it has some bottling issues uh, where it's not so smooth. So when I run it at 90 hertz refresh rate, I actually find that the headset works much better much smoother, there aren't many issues, uh, and it just goes. But when I'm at 120 hertz, I find that uh, there are some bugging issues. I find that it will stop and start. I find that um, it, it just won't be a smooth gameplay. So I have to go back to the 90 hertz. So I think that they're still working on the 120 hertz at the moment. I don't think they got it. They're not there yet. So even though on paper it can go to 120 hertz at the moment, I would both say that they're running at 90 hertz as far as I'm concerned. So uh, let's, uh, let's continue on the video. Um, so the field of view is uh, up to 115 diagonal with the DPVR versus 107 for the, uh, for the G2. Now, I do have to say that if you're doing sims, you will definitely notice the field of view a little bit different there. Uh, on the DPVR E4, I have to give it to them. It is a better field of view than the G2. The G2, I still feel I'm very tunnel vision, like I really have a 90 degree thing with something there hiding my actual field of view. If I would just do it on the camera here just to show you, uh, versus the... the <clears throat> the DPVR 4 feels a little bit more open. Not so much, to be honest with you. I don't feel that the difference is amazing. The Pimax, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, the Pimax crystal was amazing. And do go and check out that video that I did with the first impressions of the Pimax and more videos coming about the Pimax crystal, by the way. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe and the like so more people get to know that I'm going to do more videos about the Pimax crystal. But versus the DPVR 4 not that much difference, but still some difference, a little bit more open. For sure, it does help a little bit more, but somewhat helps, okay? Somewhat helps. Take it with a pinch of salt, even though there is some difference there. Um, so what else can I tell you? Well, the di okay, we could talk about the actual comfort. So in terms of the um, in terms of the actual weight, the weight there isn't that much difference. It's still around 500 grams or so. But I have to say that, first of all, with the DPVR 4 it does heat up after a while. Um, so it will feel hotter on your face. And also, there is a fan noise in the DPVR 4 which it, it's not super obvious, but it can get annoying if you're someone who's playing games which aren't very, uh, let's say, uh, full of noise, full of music, full of pump. If they're a bit more quiet, like Half-Life Alyx is, you're going to hear the noise, the fan much more, and it might get on your nerves, especially as we're already hearing the fan from our computers. It's a double fan that you're hearing now because you're hearing the fan from the computer plus the fan in the actual VR headset itself. And the headset actually heats up too. So after an hour and a, and a bit, an hour and a half, you may need to take it off just to cool it down a bit. And also because it gets hot on your, on your head. So you may not feel very comfortable after a little while, just FYI. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just saw I'd, I'd let this let you know. I think in terms of the G2, it processes the heat much better. It doesn't feel so hot on my face so soon. I can leave it on my face for at least two or three hours before I have to remove it. And also in terms of comfort, the gasket feels so much more comfortable on my face compared to the DPVR 4 The DPVR 4 I've been using it now for, as I said, good 200 hours. It's... I mean, it feels okay, it feels comfortable, but honestly speaking, the G2 just feels mega comfortable. Uh, that's also because the gasket of the G2 is more of a cotton versus the DPVR 4 which is more of a, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you know, if we, if we just look at the gasket, the gasket is more of a, you know, this kind of latexy kind of, kind of thing. 
uh, you know, versus the gasket of the G2, uh, which is basically, you know, a cotton, cotton kind of kind of feel, and it really takes your, uh, really takes all your face and everything. It just feels so much more comfortable. It's absolutely amazing. Also, I'm not a big fan of the Halo, to be honest with you. It does hurt my head after a while, even though it's not, it's put snug, it's not put super tight, but I will feel the halo tightening around my head after a while. So I do have to remove the headset after about an hour and a half versus the G2, which I don't need to remove at any time and point. I could just leave it on my face for three, four hours. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing. So guys, which headset would I actually sell if I was to sell a headset or would I update, would I upgrade to the G2 if I had, you know, sorry, if, would I upgrade to the, uh, to, to the DPI4 if I had a G2? Well, to be honest with you, the only thing that worries me is that, um, is, is that, you know, if you have a G2, no, I would not upgrade. Um, in fact, if I had both headsets there, you know, if I had bought the DPVRE4 and I had bought the G2, I would actually return my DPVRE4. That's very simple. Or I would sell it. Uh, because the G2 is just a much more powerful VR headset in terms of graphics, in terms of handling, in terms of comfort, in terms of... Uh, oh, and the audio is so much better on the G2 uh, because on the DPVRE4 you have to put external, um, you know, headphones in the headphone jack in order to have good audio. But in the G2 I don't need to do that. It's already there, it's built in, it's from Index, it's fantastic. Uh, also the graphics handled are much better on the G2. The processor inside of the G2 just handles the graphics so much better better oh my god it's much better it's much uh, clearer in terms of pixels um there's no color bleeding in, in the dpvre4 but sometimes they are here and there so you know there is never any color bleeding on the g2 um and also the fact is that with the uh the dpvre4 it can't really handle things like flicker and jagged edges as well as the g2 the g2 i can run it on a much lower kind of graphic settings things will run much faster, much smoother versus the DPVRE4. I have to crank up the settings and the graphics in order to get rid of all these flickering and, and jagged edges, but then it's going to affect the gameplay because basically the gameplay will then start to stutter a little bit or be slower. So I just would not update, upgrade, excuse me, from the G2 to the DPVRE4. And if I had both headsets, then I would just sell the DPVRE4 and keep the G2. So there you go, guys. I hope you appreciate this video. Um, you know, oh, sorry, before we go, maybe the tracking. I will say that the DPVRE4 does handle tracking a little bit better than the, the, the G2, but that's only because the G2 doesn't require specific lighting, but the tracking with the G2, as soon as you got your lighting, which is basically like this, you have a light here, you have a light there, and then maybe you have another light here, it's absolutely fine. The G2 will track everything. I've done so many different um, you know, videos with Ante Citadel with the bow and the arrow, never any issues. It works perfectly well. The tracking today is frigging amazing. The only thing that I'm worried about the G2 is the fact that HP are no longer producing them. So, you know, can you get the parts if there's any issues? Uh, can you get good customer service if there are any issues? This is really what would concern me. But as far as I'm concerned, if you can get your, help, your, your hands, excuse me, on a secondhand G2, go for it because it's an amazing, piece of gear so guys there you go hope you appreciate this video please hit the likes to get the algorithm of youtube to promote this video so more people get to see it and we can grow the community on vr essentials as well and hit the notification bell for future videos which i'll upload very very soon until next time guys take it easy hope you enjoyed this video i'll talk to you in the comments below bye for now bye bye bye, bye.